Get to your dealer now for the Power and Performance Sales Event. Get up to seven years of Yamaha warranty protection free. Or earn up to $200 in dealer credit. Yamaha Power and Performance has never been a better value. Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's March 14th. These are your headlines. First up, let us be the first to wish you a happy St. Patrick's Day this week. Also, we're hearing about herring hitting lots of the runs across southern New England. And largemouth bass continue to hit big baits. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we begin, we've got a couple of news items for you guys. The first one is a rundown of some favorite early season striper lures with Jenny Ackerman. Check it out. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat. Today, my little open boaters, we're going to be talking about some of my favorite lures for the spring run. Now, I just spent this whole evening organizing my fishing stuff. I don't know, every single time I organize the great wall of lures and my rods, I think I make progress cleaning it, but it just looks the same every single time. But looking at this wall reminded me to get stuff ready for the spring run, fishing up north, and I wanted to go over with you guys just a couple, only a few. I'm gonna spill the beans on some of the lures that I love to use. Only spilling the beans on the lures, not the locations where I'm fishing, because you know, loose slips sink ships and we don't want that this spring run. <laughs> so let's get into it. My first plug that I always have in my plug bag is a Shimano Colt Sniper. Actually, they called the current snipers now, but Shimano current snipers. And you could use an SP Minnow or a Hydro Minnow. I just personally like the current snipers. I'm, um, you know, the underdog, I'm fishing the underdog plug here. But this is a perfect example. You can see the hooks are rusty on why you should do spring cleaning like I am today with replacing rusty hooks because you do not want to be fishing rusty hooks. So the current sniper I love because it just cuts through the water. It can get nice and deep in the water column depending on how I reel it. And it's always my go-to. It's one of the first plugs I throw in spots where I'm fishing. If I don't see like a little top water bite or I don't see stripers swirling, I'm gonna throw this first and see if I can get into a bite. So the next plug is the new Tsunami little twitch glide bait we got here. This is new to Tsunami, but you should be seeing it in your local tackle shops and at the fishing shows. It is a perfect bunker imitator, has a little rattle action going on in there. And what's cool about it is you don't even have to do anything while you're retrieving it. You just cast it out, slowly retrieve. It does big zigzags in the water like that. And then a little bit faster, it does kind of more close zigzags. And then if you do give it a little twitch, it is a twitch bait. It flutters up and imitates a bunker that just got tail smacked by a 50 pounder, like absolutely perfect imitation. So this is the one lure I'm gonna be fishing 90% of the time this spring run because this one spot that I fish, I figured it out like clockwork. It just works. The twitch baits always work. Twitch baits and gliders just always work. So make sure you get yourself one of these new hot glide baits from Tsunami. Moving on, we have the infamous NLBN. Of course, everyone has an NLBN in their plug bag any time of the season because they work, they're great. You can use them off the boat too. This one I've used for a while, you can see how beat up it is. This is the five incher in Hell Yeah Butter and it's one and a half ounces. And literally I love NLBN's jig heads because they have that corkscrew. So when you're putting on the soft plastic, the corkscrew and the soft plastic just connect. So when a striper bites it, it's not pulling that soft plastic down, potentially ripping it off the hook. So it's like the best bang for your buck because you're having like the soft plastic stay on there longer. You're not losing soft plastics. You don't have to go back to the tackle shop and buy more soft plastics. They stay on the hook longer and they are efficient. So shout out to those Florida boys 
for making something that stripers cannot resist. And now one last thing, the other infamous lure that you've probably heard me talk about countless times because I've caught my biggest stripers on it, the Gen X bucktail. Now this bucktail is just simple red head, white hair, some little red feathers on the back. I have caught my biggest stripers on it, caught my biggest last October on it off the surf, but in the spring run, there's one spot where I like to fish that has a super, super strong underwater current and I fish it a little bit differently. I'll use a three or a two ounce bucktail, something heavy that can make it down to the bottom quick and I just gently jig it off those rocks and there's one spot where I feel my bucktail drop down a little. It's almost like you're black fishing when you find a good hole. It drops down and then it gets smacked because those big stripers are hiding underneath that strong ripping current waiting for bait fish to get stuck, like just thrown into the ring basically. I'm basically like foaming at the mouth thinking about it because it's just like the best spot and I've caught, there was one night where I caught three like, decent hefty lungers there and I was so tired but all on the same bucktail fishing it the same way every single time it always works it always pays off so I have a million plugs here on my wall I'm only showing you those because I have an article coming out in the April edition going over more plugs for the spring run and I want your intel on this come and see me at the fisherman magazine booth at the Edison Saltwater Expo. I'm gonna be there Friday and Saturday. And I'm gonna be doing an open boat where I'm asking you viewers what your favorite spring run lore is. So definitely come and see me. You're gonna be featured on next week's open boat. And we're gonna be going through all your favorite lures. And I'm really excited to hear what different lures you guys like to use. It's always fun talking to fellow anglers about their favorites. And I can't wait to see you all on next week's Open Boat. Next up is the giveaway, of course, which is ongoing. And, um, you know, starting to see a little bit of a steady increase in... Um, Submissions this week, which is great. Uh, a lot of freshwater fish coming in, a lot of nice largemouth bass coming in, and some holdover stripers as well. You guys know the drill by now, but if you don't, uh, it's got to be recently caught fish. You got to take a picture of you holding your fish and then send it to me at danderson at thefisherman.com or text it to the number on the screen and just give me the pertinent details like your name and uh, where the fish was caught and stuff like that, maybe the size of the fish. We'll get you in the contest and um, this one's going to wrap up on April 24th and we're giving away this uh, Connecticut Yankee dual action swimmer that I made here. Uh, pretty cool color, had it on display at the Risa show this weekend and uh, hopefully it inspired a few more guys to send in some pics. Uh, so get those in to me and uh, we'll see who wins. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Moving over to the reports now, we'll start things off with the freshwater synopsis. And this week, there's really one main point that I want to make, and that is that um, you know, largemouth bass are in like full-on pre-spawn mode right now. And with trout stocking going on and with herring runs starting to percolate a little bit, uh, these fish are more and more, and also I forgot to mention, the uh, yellow perch spawn is starting now as well. So you've got a lot of bigger bait in inshore, which is inspiring these fish to start looking for bigger things to eat. Uh, I've seen quite a few pictures this week. We got one here from Mike Dixon with like a mid five pound fish uh, that took a DS Customs triple jointed bait there. Uh, we've got one from Dan Southwick. This one just came today. Uh, this was taken on a rat bait uh, in the mid fives, he said. And then another one from Dan Southwick right here, uh, which was a fish just under seven that hit a baby possum bait. So that lets you know these fish are keyed in on bigger baits, uh, whether it's the perch spawn, whether it's the herring moving up into these ponds, or whether it's a uh, new stocking of trout, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, there's all different things going on right now that are inspiring these fish to look for bigger baits, and it's a really great time of year to throw those big baits and maybe catch your biggest bait bass of the year.
Moving over to the regional reports now, uh, I have seen a few ice fishing reports still coming out of Maine. I don't know how far now north they are, but uh, you know, I wonder how long that ice is going to last. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful out here today. I could be wearing shorts. Um, so I think that's going to wrap up soon. Dropping down over the border into Massachusetts, we'll start things off with James Jukes. Just out here uh, tossing a line in before work. You know how that goes. Daylight savings hit us over the weekend and screwed up the whole system. But it's all good. We're going to be getting lighter and lighter every in the morning. Uh, with that front coming through over the weekend, I don't know about you, but I did crappy. I know guys got fish. Plenty of guys up here got fish. It's just... <laughs> I didn't have a good weekend. Uh, hope everybody else did. Uh, and no word on uh, any holdover stripers. Uh, I did check local herring runs up this way, and so far nothing, no scouts or anything like that. So we got a little bit of ways to go for that. Uh, I know herring are filtering in down towards the Cape, uh, but nothing up here. We won't see them for another week or two. Uh, uh, but as far as uh, everything else, people catch a fish. The trout stocking has started. Make sure you check the Mass website to see what's going on there. Uh, I know I will be. And uh, sooner or later, you know, we're going to start seeing all kinds of stuff going on. But it was slow for me. <laughs> Anyways, Dave, uh, that's about it, you know. Stay warm because I'm still cold out here. But yeah, uh, let's hope the weekend things turn up a little bit better than they did last weekend. This wind is finally out of here and see what happens. All right, Dave, that's it from the North Shore. Now, as James was alluding to there, um, you know, the, the storm that came through this weekend really didn't fire things up like a lot of people thought it might. Now, a lot of the bass guys I talked to struggled, you know, especially the ones that were throwing smaller baits. Uh, the guys that did well, as we talked about in the freshwater synopsis, are the guys throwing big baits. Um, but you also have to understand that calling it, calling, calling what they did doing well is a just a different type of expectation. Guys that throw big baits are a different animal. Uh, they go out hoping for one bite, you know, and uh, you know if they do any more than that, it's a great day. Um, but the thing is, you know, as we talked about, Right now these fish are looking for bigger baits and um, you know that one bite might be the biggest fish of the season so we are seeing some of that you know from boston all the way down to the cape out onto the cape and then right on down to the uh, rhode island border and beyond um, another thing we've seen is another sort of click upwards in the smallmouth bass activity saw some nice fish taken uh, from some Plymouth ponds, saw some nice fish taken from some Cape ponds, and some interior Massachusetts uh, ponds as well. So smallmouth bass action is looking good. And then, of course, the trout fishing has been really good. The stocking trucks have been moving all over the state. They've been hitting, I mean, they're like the Easter Bunny out there. They're just hitting everything. And um, the one thing I've heard, I haven't gone to check it out myself yet, is that it seems like Mass has put in, you know, maybe like 75 to 80 percent or maybe even more uh, brook trout. But a lot of these brook trout are nice sized fish. So we're seeing some really nice sized brookies coming in uh, from all over the state, which has been cool. Uh, brook trout tend to fight a little harder than other species too, which is great. Uh, so you know, it's a, it's a pig year for brook trout in Massachusetts. Not really hearing anything saltwater wise, nothing from the canal, none of those sabiki rigged fish or anything like that. A few holdover stripers up at some of the estuaries on the Cape and they should continue to you know wake up more and more as the weather gets warmer and as more herring start to move in. Uh, last thing in Massachusetts, we'll take a ride way out west to check in now with Roy Leva. We've got a ton of rain this week, uh, which has made for some really high water, uh, especially the rivers. The rivers are pretty blown out. I mean, all of them crested way past flood stage. 
Um, so it's just starting to drop back down a little bit. Uh, there's still some rain in the forecast coming up. So we'll see what happens. Uh, fishing other than that has been tough just because of the high water, but there's still a lot of fishing to be had. Um, I haven't found anything up, you know, in the flooded timber or wood. Uh, everything I've been finding is kind of a little bit deeper water right now. Whatever weeds that are left over. Um, I've been really hammering the panfish, uh, getting some monster yellows uh, this, you know, the past couple weeks. Uh, you know, so big yellows like this. This is, this is the time of the year for this stuff. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Uh, get the most of it. Uh, that and some big uh, crappie, you know, all the panfish. Uh, so trout, trout stocking still hasn't started out here in Western Mass, but there's been some beautiful holdovers left over. Uh, I got a really nice brookie this past week, probably about two pounds on the fly rod. Uh, I'm actually thinking about bringing the fly rod out here tomorrow um, and catch some of these perch and crappie on, on fly. Uh, but other than that, that's it. Um, yeah, I guess I'll check with you guys next week. Peace. Moving over into Rhode Island now, we'll start things off with TJ Kopecki. He's going to touch on Mass and Rhode Island, uh, all East Bay stuff. So take it away, TJ. Hey guys, a lot to get into this week, uh, so we're going to get right at it. Uh, we're going to start in Massachusetts, and I was just on the Mascov uh, trout stocking pond just to try to find out what was stocked already. And anybody can go there. You can just go to Mass uh, Mascov and search the uh, trout stocking and they'll tell you exactly what day uh, ponds were stocked. So for around here for the East Bay or you know South Coast Massachusetts, Bristol County Mass um, where I'm from, the closest yet so far would be like Falls Pond in North Attleboro, Johnson's Pond in Raymond, um Mary's Pond in Rochester. Uh, they were all stocked on Monday. So uh, there's some good opportunities if you're watching from that area, uh, to, you know, get in there and fish. So uh, with that being said, I'm still waiting for Lewinbrook here, where I live in, Sw in Swansea, to be stocked. Um, it, it just says still waiting. Um, but moving on to that, some of the other stuff in Massachusetts, I ran across a couple of guys fishing in, uh, in Watsupa Pond, uh, which I, you know, I don't talk too much about. I really haven't fished that much, uh, but I'm going to give it a shot now. But uh, they were fishing on the Westport side near Whites, um, and they were using uh, night crawlers and chatterbait, uh, which had a little trailer on it. It looked like a salamander or something. But uh, they were catching bass, like one and a half, two inch, uh, two pound bass, uh, and they were doing well. You know, it was a consistent bite. And, uh, you know, I sat and I talked to the guys for about 25, 30 minutes. And, uh, you know, they caught four or five bass, which was good. Um, there is some structure. It's rocky over there. Uh, it looks like a good spot where the water would warm up along the shore. Um, there's railroad tracks. Um, there's some parking uh, further down. Uh, you can park and you can walk on this little bike path thing uh, to get around to different spots on the, on the water there. Looks like a good spot. Uh, locally here, Milford Pond. Has uh, my friend Joe's been fishing it quite a bit, and uh, he's doing well with bass, and he's doing well with crappie, and uh, he caught everything on a uh, a baba with a uh, a gulp smelt suspended about two and a half feet down, and he's just slowly jigging it. And uh, I didn't get an opportunity to get over there. That's it's one of my favorite things to do on the weekend. Uh, but uh, I did get uh, into the East Bay of Rhode Island, uh, and uh, I got to tell you. Everyone's been talking about it. My friend Jeff, uh, I've been fishing with my friend Todd, uh, but the perch bite, uh, the sea runch perch, is unbelievable right now. Uh, they're done with their spawn, they're feeding, there's some big fish around. Uh, if you have an opportunity to find them fish, get out there and fish for them. Uh, it would be pretty much a river or a pond that's connected to a salt, uh, either a hang run or it just kind of links in from salt water. Uh, it's great places to uh, to fish for uh, white perch. Uh, there are other spots uh, like Brookyard Pond that have landlocked white perch. It's still another good place to fish, and they don't stock that anymore. So you can actually fish in there in Rhode Island. Uh, it, it used to get stocked. I'm not sure why they stopped stock in that pond. Uh, I didn't see it on that Rhode Island list. So. Um, it was nice to see everybody at the show, and it was a great show, and I. Uh, just want to you know thank uh, Rissa for having a great show this year again as always 
a lot of vendors, a lot of good stuff to see. There's a lot of learning. I learned a lot. I met a lot of good people who, you know, came up to me and said, hi, you know, I see you on the videos and this and that. But uh, that's all we got for this week. And uh, hopefully we get some better fishing next week with this good weather here. Uh, it's going to warm up the water. So uh, tight lines and we'll catch you next week. As TJ talked about, we are hearing good reports of white perch, especially in those tidal estuaries. A lot of a lot of good fish being taken right now. Uh, seems like that bite really just went from like 60 to 100. Uh, so that's one thing you guys can concentrate on. Uh, we are seeing herring moving into several of the estuaries along the Rhode Island coast. And the ones that have holdover striped bass in them, you're going to see those fish come up to a new level. Uh, you're going to start to see those bigger fish waking up. They're going to be a little bit easier to target and you're going to be able to vary what you throw. You're not going to be fishing down deep so much anymore with you know with like a light jig just trying to finesse those fish into it. Now they're active, they're looking for active bait fish, they're looking for bigger bait fish and you can get it done with plugs, you can get it done with all different kinds of soft plastics, especially paddle tails. I've got some of those K-tails from NLBN coming in this week and I can't wait to get those in because I think those things are going to slay at the runs. Um, so a lot of good things going on in that respect. On the other hand, the saltwater fishing, the guys going out for codfish and stuff, I mean, they haven't really had a lot of days to get out. Maybe they're out there today. It's a lot nicer today. But uh, a lot of wind, a lot of big waves, a lot of nasty weather. And uh, reports have been somewhere between scarce and non-existent. Uh, so, you know, again, we're just kind of hoping that we see that uptick in codfish activity again as we cross over into April. we got a couple more weeks before that happens, but that's what happened last year. I have a similar, you know, end of the season or end of the winter this year, so maybe we're going to see the same thing going on. Um, other than that, you know, we, we do have trout stocking going on in Rhode Island, but trout stocked waters are off limits, so make sure you don't go in the, any of those places with the, with the trout stocked waters sign. Uh, and, you know, don't forget that Rhode Island waters, Rhode Island freshwaters, I should say, are vastly underrated as far as largemouth bass go. Very good largemouth bass fishing across the state. Just got to fish those ponds that aren't stocked with trout and I think you're going to be surprised by what you find. Crossing over into Connecticut now, I mean that this catch and release trout season that they started back in 2020 is just a great thing. It's giving guys a reason to get out there. Connecticut does a phenomenal job stocking of opportunities to catch rainbows, brookies, and browns, and tigers. A lot of nice fish get stocked in Connecticut. Then you have sea forellans. You also have some salmon opportunities. So there's lots of opportunity for guys that are going out looking for salmonids. And by all accounts, the bite has been very good. The only thing is right now you got to release them all unless you're fishing specific lakes. So make sure you check the regulations before you go if you think you're going to keep one. And um, But guys are doing it on the fly. Guys are doing it with lures. Guys are doing great with live bait, especially shiners have been working very well. And uh, the only thing you got to look out for right now is just a lot of high water because of all this ridiculous rain that we've had. Uh, so some of the rivers are blown out, some of the rivers are just not fishable. Uh, but as things sort of, you know, calm down, you'll see that fishing return. I know the Salmon River was fishing really well before the big rain. And, uh, you know, we probably got a few more days at least before that place comes back down to a fishable level. But uh, good fishing overall. I talked to Rowan today, he's out guiding and uh, wasn't going to be able to shoot us a video, but he did tell me that the Connecticut River is flooded and, uh, you know, high and dirty. And the only thing that you've got going on right now in the Connecticut River is up inside the marinas you can find some crappie and maybe some white perch or something like that. Uh, maybe some holdover striped bass as well, but a lot of the other fishing that's going on or that would be going on in the Connecticut River right now is just not happening. I did see uh, that Joe Diorio had a nice, you know, mid-sized pike. Uh, on his way home from the Reese's show the other day, so there are some fish being caught in those coves, but um, for now, a lot of what's going on is just not uh, not what we'd hope it would be at this time of the year, but with flooding rains, it is what it is. Uh, next up, let's check in now with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outfitters. What's up everyone, Matt here at Black Hall Outfitters in Westbrook with this week's fishing report. Some nice warm weather has some fish chewing. It's been pretty fun out there. Um, now that that rain has moved through, we're seeing water levels start to return to normal. Um, a little bit more rain in the forecast, but some marginal temps should be nice. Um, I got out recently and found some holdovers, um, some Lunker City finesse fish. We're getting that done. Um, small paddle tails as well can work. Gravity tackle, any of your normal um, small paddle tails, nice and slow there. Three eight ounce jig head, something like that. Um, there's also some good freshwater fishing going on right now. Some pre-spawn largemouth um, are chomping a bunch of different baits, um, crankbaits, jigs, things like that. 
Um, I got out yesterday and got a bunch of largemouth slow rolling a small Kitek paddle tail um, along the bottom. Uh, pickerel as well, always active, and then uh, crappie, lots of crappie out there. You'll see them surface feeding early on, um, most likely if the weather conditions are good. Um, those are two and two, and trout, lots of trout to catch as well. So uh, plenty to do, um, pick your days, have some fun. Now we're going to get a little snippet of the uh, wintertime life, or the end of winter time life, of a charter captain with Captain Mike Roy from Real Cash Charters. I'm getting everything ready for our season opener on April 8th. We'll be fishing for stripers. They're mostly schoolie sized stripers that time, all on light spinning tackle. So it's a fun way to start the season. If you're interested, contact me. I still have some openings for the month of April. Right now, I'm getting everything ready. So I was prepping the trailer. I replaced the trailer bearings, seals, and races, and brake pads. I'm gonna be ordering the fuel filters and spark plugs to do the outboard maintenance. So I'm getting everything ready for the start of the season. Also, the not this weekend, but next weekend, March 22nd to 24th is the Connecticut Fishing Show. I will be there with a booth and seminars. I'll have more information for you next week. Heading west, hearing a lot of trout action out there, hearing a little bit of largemouth bass action, a little bit of smallmouth bass action. Uh, but most of the fishing we're hearing about out that way is guys concentrating on the Housatonic. And for a little bit more on that and some of the other things happening in the western end of the state, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. This past week, the Norwalk Harbor was loaded with uh, winter herring. That was really nice. We saw a lot of anglers getting on them. You know, shop employee Tyler, too, he had a bunch of them. Uh, I would say like behind Norwalk Aquarium has been good on those fishing docks. You can go down to the beach at the lower tides and fish the sandbar. And then you can fish Cove Marina. <clears throat> and then you can fish, you know, right in front of Vets Park. We're loaded up on Sabiki rigs, but we saw a lot of people getting them. And that's really nice to see. Last year, they showed up really late too. A lot of people pickle them or, you know, freeze them for bait in the spring. They, walk, they work awesome for stripers. And then our local rivers are fishing well. The levels were really high so after those heavy rains. So once they come back down, they should still fish good. And then moving on to next week, we should see that, you know, the bass start to get a little more active in our area. I've heard of a couple uh, stripers caught on the beach on small soft plastics. But other than that, most anglers going up to the Housatonic and still fishing, you know, the upper parts with their favorite lead heads and soft plastics. Thanks and good luck. And to wrap up the reports, we'll take a short flight down to Marina Pez Vela, check in with... Jack Potsport Fishing and Captain Ben Gilmore. Guys, how's it going? This is Ben Gilmore down here in Costa Rica. Hope you're all doing well. I got this week's fishing report for you today, guys. Just got back from an offshore trip. We caught a 300 pound blue marlin today, plus three sailfish. Really nice day on the water. Just a couple of days back, we had six sailfish, so we got a nice sailfish bite going on right now. There's a couple of marlin out there, not too many at the moment. The water's still pretty warm. It hit 87 degrees today. There's a few big bull, mahi mahi out there as well. And there's still a really strong wahoo bite, if you can manage to land them. They've been biting off a lot of people the last couple of weeks whilst we're sail fishing. Inshore guys, there's been a lot of corvinas, sea bass showing to sardines fished on the bottom or jigs and some really nice snook and rooster fish along the beaches also. Hope to see you down here in Costa Rica. This is Ben Gilmore here at the Marina Pez Vela. See you soon. And that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully it's going to inspire you to get out there. Uh, we got St. Patrick's Day coming up this Sunday. I know a lot of guys are going to be drinking green beer. Well, for me, I don't drink, so I'm going to be trying to catch some green bass. But no matter how you celebrate it, I hope you have a safe one. Hope you have a great one. And if you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. You get a full taste of what we offer there for free. Uh, we cover all the fishing from Delaware up to Maine. We have travel pieces that reach outside the region. And we cover all different types of fishing from fly fishing and surf to inshore, freshwater, offshore, tile fish, salmon, uh, paddle board. It's all covered. It's $29.95 for the year. If you sign up at a show, you're going to get some free stuff. Even if you sign up on the website, you're going to get a free $20 gift card to Surehold. It's the best $30 bucks you can spend in fishing. You get 12 issues sent to your house, like paper magazines. You're also going to get 26 digital editions sent to your email from April through November. And you're going to get digital access to our other two editions. So we have New England, Long Island, and New Jersey, Delaware. You're going to have access to all of those online, all the back issues, all the reports. Again, best $30 bucks you can spend in fishing. But if you're still not interested after that, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. Appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.